Hey guys, so today I'm going to be recording a really highly requested tutorial for you guys and that is how to draw a crystal. Um, and if you're familiar with some of my artworks, you might know that I uh, occasionally incorporate crystals into them and generally it's like these type of crystals where it has a point at the top. So like these. And I just get a lot of questions like regarding um, how to vary the form of crystals, like how do I begin drawing it, um, how do I create like sharp edges on the crystals, how do I create texture, um, things like that. So I thought that this would be a good topic to, to cover and break down into basics for you so that it'll be easy for you guys to follow along and draw your own um, variations of crystals that are similar to these. So let me just show you guys an example of what it looks like in one of my artworks. So something like this. So not like a geode or like a cluster, but just a single point crystal. Um, so for today's video, I'm going to be using my trusty Zebra Graphics mechanical pencil. Um, I like this because it has such a fine lead. I don't know if it's showing up, but it has a really, really fine lead, so it doesn't leave a lot of graphite residue, um, which makes it a less messy cleanup when I erase my underdrawing after I ink in my illustration. So I love um, this particular pencil. So that's what I'll be using today, as well as the Tombow Mono Zero eraser and you guys already know that I'm like a big fan of this eraser but it's just so easy to um, erase small specific areas with this because it won't erase like surrounding areas um, when you have like a larger eraser sometimes you accidentally erase more than you intend to and with this eraser that does not happen so I really like this one as well okay so let's get started um, I think the best way to begin drawing anything really is to break it down into its basic elements and when you look at a crystal, you can see that it is made up of very, um, I guess, I want to say basic. Yeah, like, I guess kind of basic geometric elements. So for example, there's a hexagon in the middle or like a hexagonal shape. And then there are two triangles on either side. And then three rectangular shapes that create um, the different faces of the crystal. So when I look at this one, that's what I see. And um, when I look at like these guys, that's also basically what I see. So this middle um, face of the crystal looks pretty much like a hexagon. And then the two shapes on the right are primarily triangular while the three facets of the body are primarily rectangular. And then this one is pretty similar to that as well. So of course they all vary in shape and size, but generally those are the basic shapes that make up these crystal points. So what I start out with when I draw these types of crystals is I usually start out with like the outline, the outer outline of the crystal. Like how wide do I want it to be? What is the general shape that I'm going for? Um, how high would I like the crystal to go? Um, like the width, height, things like that. So the way that I begin drawing out my basic crystal outline shape is by tackling like that top kind of pointy area first. So what I do, or what I like to do, is I draw sort of a, almost like a triangle without its utmost point. So what I mean by that is I draw a shape kind of like this. So as you can see, it's like kind of trapezoidal, but um, I think like an easier way of thinking about it is like it's a triangle, right? But then that top little apex right there has been cut off so that it is flat on top rather than pointy like this. 
and the reason why I like to draw my crystals that way is because I kind of like the look of like imperfect crystals and when a crystal looks too perfect like this one is really nice and it comes to like that triangular point at the top and th you know obviously if you're going for like this kind of crystal look you can totally draw it that way but I tend to gravitate towards something a little bit more imperfect like this so I like to flatten out that top a little bit so once I have that top shape right here the next thing I do is I think about how big do I want my crystal to be um, this crystal is just going to be like a medium size, so I kind of want it to go about this far down. If you want a shorter crystal, of course you can end your line up higher. If you'd like a crystal that's taller, you can end your line further below. So once I've drawn the left and the rightmost edges of my crystal, I have my basic crystal outline. I'm going to keep the bottom here empty or blank for now and I will show you guys why I do that in a few minutes. So once I have this general shape, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle the inside of my crystal. Like I said previously, that middle shape is usually something that's like a hexagonal type of shape and then the left two sides look more triangular. So I'm going to draw two lines coming outward so they're not going straight down but they're angles to the left and to the right from the two corners that my flat top created again because I have a flat top it's going to create these two corners and that's where I'm drawing these lines from so I'm drawing two slightly diagonal lines like this. You can draw them more spread apart, you can draw them closer together, it's really your preference. What I generally do is I stop these two lines where this corner begins. So these two corners usually serve as my guideline um, as to when I would like to stop these lines. You guys can go further down um, of course, but for some reason for me, it's like when I go further down, it looks a little funky. Um, I, it, like it just doesn't look right dimensionally for some reason. So generally, I like to stop my inner lines right where these corners begin. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two horizontal lines to connect the bottom of these two lines with these two corners. So again, I just drew a horizontal line here, a horizontal line here. And as you can see, it's starting to form the shapes that I was talking about earlier, like the triangles. So it's starting to form like this type of shape right here, triangle here, triangle here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off that middle shape and close it off um, in a hexagonal manner. Starting at the inner corners of the triangle, I'm going to draw a little line going towards the center of my crystal. You can draw, again, you can draw these lines longer if you'd like, but I tend to like these lines to be kind of short. So if you look here, um, these lines right here that go towards the center of that crystal are a little short. You can make it longer though, it's totally up to you. And I make them the same length because, I mean, you can make them different lengths, but it looks kind of off a little bit. So I tend to make them the same length. But again, completely up to you and it is your preference. The next thing I do is I'm going to close off that bottom shape by simply drawing a horizontal line going across. And that closes off that hexagon. Okay, so now you can see that we've formed the basic shapes for the top or the upper half of the crystal. And the next thing I'm going to do, which is, I think the easiest part is draw the body of the crystal. So I'm going to be drawing two vertical lines coming from 
these two inner corners. So these two inner corners right here. I'm gonna use that as a starting point for the body. And I'm just gonna draw two vertical lines going down. Like that. And you can see that your crystal's really starting to take shape and it looks almost complete. The last and final step is to close off your crystal. The reason why I kept it open was because it's easier to draw these angles when you know where the inner lines will be placed and you kind of don't know that until you draw that the hexagon in the center. So that's why I left that for um, later. So now that I have the placement of these two inner lines right here, I'm gonna close off the bottom of this crystal. And if you guys can see, in all of these crystals, that middle shape is a rectangle. Um, but the shapes on the left and the right of that, they are rectangular, but they're not perfect rectangles. They have like a little edge, maybe that's sloped down or something like that. So I'm gonna show you guys how to close it off um, in that way. The middle rectangle, again, is just a regular rectangle. So I'm just gonna close it off with a regular horizontal line. So now I've just created like this type of shape, a regular rectangle shape. And then I'm not gonna close off these two with a regular horizontal line because let me show you what that looks like when I do it. Immediately, the crystal looks flattened out and it looks two dimensional rather than three dimensional. And the reason for that is because since I drew this line horizontally and not at an angle, it doesn't give the appearance that the crystal is a kind of like cylindrical shape where it like wraps around and isn't just like flat like this. So in order to create that look of um, different faces of the crystal uh, wrapping around, what you do is instead of closing them off at a straight horizontal line like that, you're gonna close them off at a slight angle going upward. So again, instead of a straight horizontal line like this, I'm going to close it off at a slight upward angle. So going up, going up. And immediately you can see that it's created that dimension that we are looking for that you can see in these crystals. Here. And then once you have this basic shape, then it's really easy to add like variations and imperfections, maybe little chips and like different facets. So for example, um, I don't want all my crystals to look exactly the same like this usually. Sometimes that is a look I'm going for, but um, generally I do want them to vary. So sometimes like I'll add like little variations like this maybe I'll add like a little extra face here a little chip there the great thing about crystals is that they all vary slightly in shape um, and they all have different characteristics that make them unique to themselves so um, you don't need to feel like pressured to make these cracks or like imperfections a certain way but you can make them however you'd like so you know you you saw that i just made those little imperfections up and that's what's so great about drawing crystals is that once you get that basic shape down it's really easy to make each one unique to itself and kind of just change it up a little and vary um, the edges and vary the width and like the height of each individual shape that makes up that crystal. Just to recap, I'm gonna draw this one more time for you guys, but explain it a little bit more quickly. Um, I begin by drawing that top edge and I'm going to create two lines that go outward. This creates a triangle with a flat top or kind of like a trapezoid that doesn't have a bottom. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the height of my crystal. This one's going to be a little taller. Once I have that, I am going to begin drawing the upper half of the crystal. I'm going to draw two lines coming from the top two corners at a slight angle. So like this. And then I stop those lines where these corners begin right here. So you can see that I stopped them right around that area. And then I'm gonna close off those triangles by connecting the bottom of that line to that corner. Again, connecting the bottom of this line to this corner. And then drawing that hexagon in the middle. So I've created two lines going inward towards the center. And then I'm just going to create the bottom by drawing a horizontal line. Next, I'm going to draw two lines going downward for the body of the crystal. And those two lines will start from these two inner corners. So sometimes uh, people get confused and start the lines from like these corners right here. But um, just keep in mind that those lines come from the very inner corners, right there. So this one too, very inner corners, very inner corners. So I'm gonna draw two vertical lines going straight down, like this. And then I am going to close off the bottom of my crystal by forming a rectangle in the middle. And the left and the right hand sides will be closed off at an angle like this. So angles that, or lines that go slightly upward. Like that to give it some dimension. You can angle your line more if you want even like more dimension. Like that. So after looking at it, I actually do want to give it a little more dimension. So I'm gonna erase my previous lines. So you can see the higher you angle your lines, like the more, um, I, I guess the more it looks like the crystal's going far back, like further back into space. Like this. And then once you have the basic shape of your crystal, you can go ahead and start adding in some little cracks. So this is where like the texture part would kind of come in. Like that. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so the next part of this video will be me drawing these on um, a watercolor block for you guys and then showing you how I paint them using watercolor and gel pens to create a really bright and saturated look to the crystals. That'll be in part two of this how to draw a crystal series. Um, I hope this video was helpful guys and please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.